In this series, I'll walk you through how to use Cogito to make your game. If you haven't heard of Cogito, it is a free Godot engine project template that enables you to make first person adventures, shooters, and immersive sim type games. Each video that I make will cover one topic, so you can watch them in any order. Though if you're new to Cogito, I recommend you start at the first one. In this video, I'm using some assets made by Loaf BRR, or as I'd like to pronounce it, Loaf Brr. They make great assets for Godot, and a lot of them are free, so check them out via the link in the description. They didn't pay me to say this, but I just like their assets, and I wanted to give them a shout out. Alright, so let's get started. Welcome to the next part in this tutorial series. So, in the last video, we made our first items. We made these medipacks. And we're gonna continue with items by creating our first wheelable. Uh, wheelable are a bit more complex, so um, this video might be a bit long, but I want to be thorough and make sure you all understand how, how this all works. So let's get started. Um, I'm gonna just fly through my level because after the player gets through the little tunnel that we have here, I want them to find the first wheelable. And the first wheelable is gonna be this sci-fi pistol, this blaster. And what I've done so far, just in the interest of time, is I've already turned this into a pickup object. So it has just the mesh and a collision shape and a pickup component. And as you can see, I have not created the item resource for this yet. And we're gonna start with that right now. If you're not sure how to create a pickup item, just watch the previous video. It's the same process like with the midi pack, except we're now gonna create a different type of item resource for this. So, okay, I'm gonna click on my pickup component within the sci-fi pistol scene. I'm gonna create a new slot and then I'm gonna click on the inventory item and now I'm gonna select a new wieldable item. And here I'll call this blast blaster. And as a description looks like it would be deadly. Before I do anything else, I'll right click and save this. And I'm gonna go to my game tutorial folder where I saved the MIDI pack. I'm just gonna call this blaster item. Now that I have created this, I'll edit this there directly. I just wanna make sure I'll edit the resource at the source. Okay, let's continue. I'm gonna add an icon. Blaster icon, there we go. Yeah, that's it. Now I don't want this to be stackable. Um, stack size one, that's good. I don't need a hint text because wheelables don't use that. Item size, I'm gonna make this two by two. Audio, I wanna add a pickup sound to this. Um, I have something here. Weapon one fully, let's try that. Yeah, that sounds good. And I'm gonna leave the sound drop blank. Now I'm gonna go back up here to the wheelable settings. And the wheelable scene, we don't have that yet. So I'm gonna leave this blank for now, but we have to come back to this. Charge max, I'm gonna set it to eight. Ammo item. I call this blaster ammo. Charge coin is eight. And I'm gonna give this a range of, let's say 15 and a wheel level damage of three. We can tweak all of this later, but this is just to get us started. The wheel level data icon, this is used for what gets displayed in the player hut in the corner. And if you leave this empty, it usually just displays this icon. And that's fine by me. And finally, we need to make sure that we 
reference our drop scene, as you all know, that's very important. So I'll go back to my file system here and I have the pickup sci-fi pistol saved here and I drag that in here and I'll save this. You can see I moved my starting point into this corridor. I walk up here, pistols on the ground. I pick it up and it says plaster added to inventory shows up here. The one thing is that if we use it, it's going to throw an error. Yeah, because we haven't defined the wheelable scene. So let's do that next. So what I usually recommend when creating a new wieldable is to simply reference the existing ones or also just copy them and then modify them to fit your needs. The reason why wieldables don't have like a prefab, you can simply change a few parameters is that they are just so varied in how they function. Um, but the most common types can be used to just copy and then modify as you need it. So because I know that my blaster is going to be a projectile weapon, I'm going to use the included toy pistol as a base. But first I'm going to create my pack scene for this. So I'm going to click here on the wheelables, right click, create new scene. This can be a 3D scene. And I'm just going to call this blaster. And that's it. Next, I need a script for this. And for this one, I'm going to actually copy the existing wieldable toy pistol script. Um, so I just press control D to duplicate. And then I'm going to rename this to wieldable blaster. There we go. It's going to take a moment because Godot has to parse the files again. And what I'll do right now is in my scene, I'll attach the script wieldable blaster to my root node. So I open the script and where it says pistol settings, I'm going to change this to blaster settings just to differentiate ourselves a little bit more. I'm not going to change anything else because everything else would work for what we want to do. Now going back here, we need to add a couple more notes for this to really work. First, I'm going to add an audio stream player so we can play sounds. I'm going to add an animation player for animations. And finally, I need our mesh. And usually I like to add a mesh into its own node to give me more control. So I'm going to add a node 3D, call this blaster mesh. And now I'll simply go back to our pickup, select the meshes, copy those, go back to my blaster and paste. And then I make sure, of course, that they are right under that blaster mesh node. So if we look to our settings here, the blaster setting needs a couple of things. First of all, it needs the wieldable mesh. We've already set that up, so I'm going to assign that here. Then it needs a projectile prefab. I've prepared a prefab, but I haven't tested it yet. So we're going to discover if that works together. Um, small projectile, that's what I called it. And if you want to take a quick look, uh, this is what it looks like. It's a simple cylinder and a particle effect and a glow screen. Okay, back to the blaster. Um, Projectile velocity, let's try out 10. ADS FOV, that's the aim down sights. A few. 65, I can actually maybe make that a bit lower. Default position 000, that's fine. Um, audio. So the primary use, we have a sound for that. Just 
go to my sounds. I'm gonna add the shoot sound. It's nice and punchy. Um, reload. I have a sound for that too. Yeah, sounds nice. And secondary use, I'm gonna leave blank because our secondary use is actually just aiming and I don't need a sound for that. Another thing we need is what's called a bullet point. If we go back to our toy pistol, you can see it has this note here called bullet point. And this is a unique note. And from the position, you might be able to guess what it's used for. Um, so I'm gonna copy this and paste this here. So the bullet point is being used to define where our projectiles are being spawned. Um, so what I like to do is I actually put this under the blaster mesh and move this over here and make sure it lines up with our like with our muscle and I usually remove it a little bit so the projectile just comes out a little bit further ahead I make sure this is like a child of the mesh because if I move the mesh around I want to make sure the bullet point moves with it right so that's the whole reason for that okay so now that we have all of this we can finally start with setting up our animations so to set up our animations we're gonna use the animation player and we just create our new animations from scratch and we know we need at least four different animations. And why do I know that? Because I can just see what's going on here when I click on my blaster under the wheelable settings, under animations. I'll need an animation for equipping, unequipping, primary and secondary action and reload. We don't have a secondary action because for us, that's just aiming and aiming is procedural. That's not animated. I can ignore that. And that leaves us with four. Equip, unequip, action primary, which is gonna be firing and reloading. I'm gonna animate these from scratch, so it's gonna take a while and I'll probably fast forward through this, but I'll still leave it playing so you can at least pause and see a little bit what I'm doing. So one more thing that I almost forgot, and that's actually very important is, uh, we need to make sure we control our visibility in the animations. I'm just gonna go to my equip animation and I'm gonna go to my blaster mesh node and under visibility, I'm gonna set a keyframe here. And what I wanna do is oh I actually see that this animation is not correct yeah the unequip and equip are reversed so let me fix this real quick as well I'm just gonna switch this over here okay so now the equip is actually the equip animation and back to our visibility is I usually just go to the very first uh, frame. And then to the second frame. And I set keyframes for the visibility. And on the first one, I turn it off. And what this does is that it just make sure 
the visibility gets triggered on every time I equip it. On the other end, I need to make sure that when I unequip it, the visibility gets turned off. So again, let me quickly fix this animation because it's reversed. Do this and then add a keyframe for visibility. It's on. Go to the very last frame. And turn it from on to off. And there we go. Okay, that should be good enough. And now I need to make sure I assign all these animations. So I'll go back to Blaster. And animations are assigned on a string basis. So I need to make sure that whatever they're called here is what they're called here. So last animations slash equip and I'll just copy and paste this and equip this one is fire and this one is reload and there we go I'm gonna save this real quick um, one thing that is not gonna look okay right at the moment is our positioning if you go to the toy pistol you see how it's actually offset and this offset is um, based on how it gets positioned with the player view so what I'm gonna just do is I'm gonna just copy this information to uh, my blaster wieldable so now that we've set up our blaster wheelable, um, it's probably not going to be perfect right away, but we should be good enough to test it. Um, next, I need to make sure our blaster item resource references our wheelable scene. So I'm going to open up the reference. And on the wheelable scene, I just do a quick load, search for blaster, and here is the wheelable blaster. And this should be it. Now I should be able to test this. Okay. <laughs> so as you can see, our weapon shows up, but it points in the wrong direction. And this should be an easy fix. So I've just tweaked some of the parameters to make sure this uh, looks a little bit better. Um, so mostly what I did is I adjusted the position here always made sure to update the default position as well. And I've tweaked my projectile to have like a nicer trail. And also made sure that the projectile velocity is set a decent amount. Don't want it to be too slow, but also not too fast. And this is the current result of this. Picking this up. Projectile has some trails. It's not it's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. 